Welcome to the Dr. Tom Show. Today, I am really excited to have grabbed a fellow human being from across the pond, uh, who I've been really excited to get on the show for a long time, been following what he does and really inspired by how he gives so much to other people. And I'm excited to get into his psyche and, and his world. Uh, since the age of 13, he had an injury in wrestling, which took him to the chiropractor. And since then, he knew it was in God's plan that he should serve people through, through chiropractic. Now, he's done that in so many ways in such a short space of time, uh, through his practice taking care of thousands of people, through establishing ChiroFest, which is one of the biggest vitalistic chiropractic seminars in the world that started in 2011. He's been called to the Board of Life Chiropractic West and the Washington State Association Board. And he really does believe that we all have potential for greatness if we just find out how to release it. Dr. Paul yeah. Reed, thank you ever so much for joining us on the show. It's such a pleasure to have you with us. 100%, brother. Thank you for having me on. Yes, all the way across the pond. We got crazy time zone coordinating going on. But yes, it's so amazing to be here. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. The honor is mine. And I, you know, I was saying to you before the show, I, I read through your bio and I've been watching what you do. And with so much going on, how do you keep focused and how do you keep your drive to just, just keep serving? Man, I think it's honestly, Doc, I, it's, it's really comes from serving something bigger than self, right? So when we, when we step out of, of self serving um, and, and have a purpose bigger than who we are as, as human beings, and, and that, that's the motivation. It's like knowing that there's, there's greater things to happen, there's greater impacts that we're supposed to do. Um, and then reverse engineering that, sitting down and really getting quiet with yourself and finding out how am I supposed to help humanity? How am I supposed to serve humanity? Where am I supposed to take myself? How am I supposed to lead? And we all, we all have that within us. We, we are all, we're all put here for a purpose. We're all put here to make an impact and make change. And so getting quiet um, and understanding exactly where you're supposed to be. And then there's really, there's really no need for motivation because you're doing what you're called to be doing. And so that motivation is just, it, it just starts. Um, and so that's, it's really, unfortunately people get stuck. They just, they just look at the four walls around themselves, right. And they get, you know, and, and they're putting out fires continuously. And so then they lose sight of their purpose or their passion or their why. And so when that why becomes big enough, right. You just, that you don't lose that motivation, that fire. Now you, don't get me wrong. I'm going to have down times. There's times like, Hey man, I'm taking today off. I need a nap. I'm going to go golf. I'm going to hang out with my wife. I'm going to do like stuff to take care of me. But then you you get right back on you know on the track and know that you're moving towards that that desired state. So. I love that you're you're absolutely right. And people do I think go through fits and start of kind of realizing that purpose, but then they don't do what you said the next bit. They don't reverse engineer it and sit down and go well, actually how can I make this a reality? How can I make this happen? So that'd be cool. Two areas really cool to actually maybe go into and discuss. First of all, like we we all are part of a plan and there is a purpose for each and every one of us. Mm. Yeah. How do people find that or realize that? Have you got any tips or ideas that people could maybe just lean into? Yeah, you know, I think um, I, I, honestly, it's it's not easy. Just full transparency, it's not. I think that's why there's there's so many people that just get stuck in their rut and and doing you know working a nine to five. Um, but it's it's aligning when you align your passions with your abilities. Like you, you, we all have talents, right? We all have gifts and talents. And when you align that with your passion, that's your, your sweet spot per to say. And so when you, when you find that sweet spot, then you need to understand that that's, Hey, that's my, that's my zone of genius. Like that's where I'm supposed to be. And then just continuously working, working that to get you to where you want to be. And it's scary, isn't it? Like sometimes it's scary to lean into it, your, your passion or your, your it, gift. It really is. I just spoke on fears this last weekend at a, an event and you know, it's almost the fear of success exceeds some of the other fears. Cause you're like, man, if, if, if I do accomplish this, like there's a burden and a responsibility that comes with that success of, of leaning into your greatness. And then, so a lot of people I find will hold, like they're just, just close enough to, to be successful, but not really take that next leap towards that, that next level, because they know like, shoot, if I, if I step into that, like it's going to require more of me as a leader um, and some people are f fearful of that, that obligation. I so. think a lot of, that, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of that fear maybe comes out of the judgment. So, you know, I'm going to get judged for being successful. I'm going to get judged for doing the right thing or, or what I'm, I'm meant to do. And yeah. so we stay small, so we don't get judged. 
but then yeah. maybe you get to the end of your life and realize who's actually judging you at the end of the day and have you really yeah. you know got to it so yeah and that's yeah amen and we do we do allow our past you know parents opinions and experience all of our past experiences whether it was from a coach a teacher a parent a pastor somebody has has put you know placed something on us and we need you know and, and those things are what limit us we got to really learn to to break those shackles and and uh, you know move forward into your zone so and can you remember what did it for you can you remember what it was there a turning point where you were like damn that's what i've got to go for now you know i you know like you you shared my chiropractic story um you know i didn't understand it at the time you know, but I, you know, later as, as my chiropractic career matured and I matured as a chiropractor, I understand, you know, connecting man, the physical with man, the spiritual and that. And literally that's what happened when I was in eighth grade, like that adjustment happened. And I got off the table. I'm like, man, when my sports career is over, this is what, I, this is how I'm going to serve my community. Mm -hmm. And so I really like, you know, I met my, you know, my current wife now that next year as a freshman in high school and was like, no, I'm going to be a chiropractor. I'm going to be a chiropractor. I'm going to sports it. And, and literally just marched towards that. Um, and I, you know, I feel sometimes people have careers or, you know, things they're supposed to do in life placed on them at, at a young age. And then they just, they're so filled with external, you know, influences that they, for, they lose that. And I feel, you know, I was just blessed enough to be able to, to stay the course. And I, and I honestly feel like people, when they're in, in alignment with what God created them to do, that things happen easy. And, you know, I, I, you know, it's not that it didn't come without work and effort and, and blood, sweat and tears, but things just aligned um, as I grew, you know, to have multiple offices and chiropractic, all the things, just because I knew that, you know, this, this is how, one of the ways I'm supposed to impact the, impact the planet is, is through, through that. So, yeah. And you're, you're right. You mentioned that, like, it doesn't come without blood, sweat and tears. It doesn't come without <laughs> a little bit of effort. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that effort can be the start of going, how can I take this crazy idea, which I kind of know I'm meant to do. How can I actually make that into a reality? What do I, you know, cause you spoke about the reverse engineering. Where can people start with that? Like if they've got a burning desire, they know they've got to do this. And if they don't do it, they'll regret it for the rest of their time. Like how do they even start to pick that apart? Yeah. So I, I think, um, again, just like we did, you just mentioned like reverse engineering, so go, go like, what would this, what would my perfect day, perfect life, perfect, everything look like, like just r literally write it out. I would be working X amount of hours a day. I would spend X amount of time, you know, with my fan, like, right, like literally write that out and then work backwards on the steps it's going to take for you to get there. And mm -hmm. and literally down to the, like, I need to spend this amount of time studying. I need to spend this amount of time working. I need to spend this amount of time, you know, doing all those steps to work up to where you want to be. And same thing with the practice, right? Guys want to get into practice, and I want to serve X amount of people, no matter what the number. And then they just put it out there and they don't really like, Hey, okay. How fast do I have to deliver my adjustment to be able to see that amount of people in an hour, in a week, in a day, you know, how, how long should my exams take me? How long, you know, like they don't even, they don't even work backwards. They're like, there's so many incongruencies in that component. Cause like, Oh, I want to serve X amount of people, but yet I'm delivering an adjustment that will allow me to serve a third of that amount of people because I haven't taken the time to think about, well, shoot, I can only spend, you know, 85 seconds with that patient if I want to be able to serve the number so that you got to really like get down to the details of like what would my life look like if I if I wrote out that perfect or my business or whatever it might be like every you know I, I talk about I find foundational five is what I coach my guys on yet your faith your family your fitness your finances and fun like like engineer those things out like what would it look like in each of those categories for you to be you and we're all different you like like doc we don't we don't want the same things, desire the same things. We're all our own thumbprint. And so it, like yours is different. Mine is different than people you're working with. Um, and so it's really writing that out and, and, and detailing what it would look like for you to get to that, that position. So. A couple of things came up there. What I really like about your foundational five is you started with uh, faith and family. Yeah. Like a lot of people start with business and then fit their faith and family and like lifestyle around yeah. it. And it never yeah. works. No, it doesn't like, and I'm sure you run this all the time. Like I guys that I'm working with, no matter what the industry, like their, their business or work environment is a direct reflection of their, their house. Like, is your house in order? If your house is in order, that other stuff is naturally going to be in order. But if you're, if your other stuff is, is in chaos, like you're going to carry that in and, and yeah, you're just, you're not going to have, you'll have some success, but it's not going to be without more trial and tribulation. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's fleeting, isn't it? It comes and goes and it's not yeah. sustainable long-term. 
And it's funny you mentioned about the, the reverse engineering of practice. You get people who go, I want to serve this many people, but the Instagram life tells me I can work two and a half days a week. And it's like, yeah, right? <laughs> it's congruent here, is it? No, no. Like, I don't have to get outside and tell the story. I don't have, yeah. <laughs> I could show up and work from, you know, 10 to one and be done. No. But I suppose happen. that comes from the potential that they're not really following their true gift and purpose. 100%. Because if you were, you'd, you'd hustle for it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's not, I, I just, I just met with Ron Oberstein, um, the, the president of Life West. He was here in town and uh, he talked about the immigrant mentality, right? Like a lot of us, you know, don't show up and work with that immigrant mentality. When you have that, like you, you hustle, like you do, like this is where you're supposed to be and you show up and do the work, right? To, mm -hmm. to create your world. And we today have gotten complacent and lazy and Instagram, Facebook life, like, oh, everything's, you know, I can smile and talk good stuff's happening without, you know, doing any, yeah. any I'm a YouTuber. But I think our, I, I do think our professions like, like internally, like chiropractors, chiropractor actually perpetuated a bit of that falsely, really, like get instant results, do this, get that. It's, it's not true, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, nothing, nothing. Nothing comes with without effort, for sure. Which I think is great. Like, you know, one of the events you put on is Chirofest and you, you bring people who, who've really done stuff in the profession to you. Um, what inspired that? What, why, why did you go like, I've already got a busy practice. Why do I now want to go and put on a, a big seminar? Because I know, I, like, kudos to you. You're, you're putting it on this year, which I think is amazing. You're sticking you, to your man. principle and you're staying true to your purpose. Yeah. So thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, but thank you. Um, what inspired it? Yeah. You know, honestly I had done, so I was doing some coaching within chiropractic and then um, my business partner at the time decided to, to step back from that. He had four young kids and it just, it was just uh, too heavy of a lift for us both. So I started a, a monthly philosophy group um, and I, with my docs here locally, we had 20 to 40 of us that came and I went to honestly full transparency. I share the story all the time. And, and so does Bill. I, I showed up at, at uh, Bill DeMoss's Cal Jam very, his very first one. And I'm like, dude, like, I want to, let, let, let's do this in the Northwest. Like, well, let's separate six months out. Yours is always in February, March. Let's go, you know, at chiropractic anniversary weekend up in September. And I'll do it up in the North side. Well, you know, Cal John North or something. And he's like, Paul, honestly, I'm still navigating, figuring this out. I'm doing me, you go do you. And I'm like, all right. Um, and so I, uh, and that, that's really how it birthed. I sat down and tried to come up with names, like what I want to call it. And, you know, it's chiropractic celebration, essentially, you know, it's ChiroFest. It's always around, you know, unfortunately, this year I had to move it to a different state. So it's not around our anniversary weekend, but historically every year it's within a, a few days of chiropractic's anniversary, September 18th. Um, and it's, you know, our tagline is honor the past, preserve the future. And so mm -hmm. selfishly, I do it because I want my kids as kids as kids is to understand and have the opportunity for chiropractic the way that I believe chiropractic should be delivered and communicated to the masses and so I, it, it, it was birthed simply to make sure that we, you know, honor our past and preserve our future. So I love that. Yeah. So, okay. Honor the past and preserve the future. Give us something on that. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, cause a lot of, I, I, I tell you, I hear in the audience and there's a lot of young chiropractors that are like, don't need to read about the past. Like you've got to stay current and you know, this, you know what they get spun, like yeah. honor the past and preserve the future. What does that really mean? Like on a tangible level? staying true to what we were founded on, you know, like how did this all begin with DD and BJ, like staying true to like, there's lots of adjuncts. Yes. We, we can evolve, we can adapt and change and, and add other things in, but the core of what we do should not change the core of who we are should not change. Um, and, and so it's really, you know, getting like this year, I'm having, um, Dr. Chuck Gibson speak, it's been practice. He's been coaching for 50 years, mm. you know, practicing forever and so every year I try and bring somebody in that's that we're honoring like he's 80 I just saw him this last week and he's 87 now like we don't know how much longer he's like one of our greats like we don't know how much longer he's going to be with us so I'm you know putting him on stage to let him share so we I honor them in that way but really you know honoring our roots of, of who we are as chiropractors and then preserving that like staying true to who we are and, and moving forward so. I, I love that and for whatever anybody says about chiropractic like you take it right back to its foundations it's a philosophy, science, and art of all things natural. Like that's the core. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It, it can change, like it can, but so long as it is still a philosophy, science, and art of things natural, yeah. you know, a, you know, system of adjusting the spine by the hand only, but that can change because it still fits in with the, you know, the, the, the yeah. foundational premise of it. 
Yeah, I mean, like, uh, and we, we have to adapt, right? Like, you know, we don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but like, our 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 soils are ruined today. So if you're not taking, if you're not supplementing and, and and providing the nutrients to your body to give it its best ability, then then you're out of alignment. So we got to, you know, you gotta you gotta adapt. You know, the world. Of course, the three T's are extremely different. You know, yeah. from where they were in 1895. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but but see, the principle is you and I know what the three T's are. A lot of people don't like these docs getting out of school right now. Three T's? What are you talking about? I'm like, all right, <laughs> you know, yeah. we got we got patience. We won't tell them here story. on this because we want them to go look and see what it is. Go find a book and read. <laughs> go to Carfax. Go. And, go <laughs> um, I love that and. I suppose I, I just want to transition a little bit. Um, yeah. I want to come back to that slightly uh, in a minute, but you've started something, uh, the unstoppable man, which I thought yeah. was really cool. when I sort of jumped on, jumped on it. And what I loved about what you've done with that so far is you're very steadfast. You're very certain um, and passionate. And you know what, that that's a real quality of a leader. Um and the world needs more of those at the moment, I think. Like, you know, yeah, you don't have to be the president of a country to be a leader. You can be a leader in your community, in your house. Uh, so tell me a little bit about, you know, why did that start? What, what, what is the, the purpose behind that? Yeah, you know, and it comes back to, you know, that tug on your heart that we, we talked about, like your alignment, your, what, where you're supposed to serve. Um, it's been probably six ish years or so maybe seven that i've just been like that nudge of like things keep you know and quiet time stuff keeps coming up like hey you should be you know leading men you should be leading men partially um you know getting that tug but then just seeing men um you know not living up to the way that we were created and designed to be like men you know it's just again these are just my opinions my observations but i think we're not leading our households we're not leading our communities we're not leading our our businesses and we're not leading in the world the way that we're supposed to be leading and men have gotten you know complacent and soft and um you know uh yeah i mean there's so many ways you can describe it but civilized almost instead of being really you know barbarian-esque and and really getting out and and, and standing up for who we are and what we believe in and, and taking responsibility um, for where exactly where we're at. And so, yeah, so that's really how that bird that took me, you know, a bit of time to come up with how I was going to serve and, um, you know, within the balance of like practice and life and whatnot. And so that's really how that, that was birthed. And yeah, so that's really, you know, kind of my, my passion right now, obviously outside of, of the practices is to, is to serve men to help them be better leaders, you know, better fathers, you know, better in the workplace, more fit, like take better, you know, that's one of the foundations is, you know, one of my early mentors in practice, you know, uh, coaches taught me that like, if you're, you're no, you, and we teach as patients, like you're no good to anybody if you're sick or dead. Right. So we got to start taking care of ourselves so that we can, you know, we're there for our family. We're there for our communities. Um, yeah. So that's really, uh, doc, how that started is just my, you know, seeing a need and, and really on my heart, like I've been blessed beyond belief, um, you know, on, on many of those, this areas, again, didn't come without work and, and without, you know, roadblocks and, you know, hiccups, but feel like I've been given a good foundation to be able to share with others and, you know, too much given much is expected back to kind of how we started, like, hey, dude, all right, so you, you know, all this stuff now, you know, go out in the, in the fields and start sharing with other people so that they can, you know, step up. So. That's really true. And I, I think the ripple effect of that is a lot of people don't, realize how much they have to give they're mm -hmm. waiting too long to share their message or share their knowledge or share their thoughts like who am i compared to them but that person up there is so far removed from the person way below there's got to be someone who comes in the middle yeah. you know and if you're if you're you know standing at the top and leading these men then they're now leading the people you know beneath them the ripple effect of that is huge yeah and it's tough you know i i you know full transparency struggled that a little bit myself like man like the imposter syndrome right comes mm. in you start to, <laughs> the monkey starts talking to you like am i really the guy have i done enough you know and then and then you know you do stuff like this and you just spit stuff out you're like hey actually yeah i did <laughs> like you know like oh I, I knew that like um i have experience that been there done that so yeah you gotta you gotta really fight i just coached my guys on imposter syndrome a couple of weeks ago like that like it's a constant thing especially now like you said with all the social like everybody's acting like they're you know the, the image on that we see on social media is really not who people are. And so then people are like, Oh, well, he's doing that and that why I shouldn't be doing that. And I'm not good enough or not. So well, I suppose contrary to like what you, what you're standing for is there's a, 
there's a consciousness in in social to not be the tough person you know to be very apathetic and where does where does that get us you know yeah. No, nowhere. nowhere. Policy changes, like the world changes, and and suddenly it's changed, and you're like, oh, I didn't realize that happened. Well, you didn't do anything to try and change it. Yeah. So important. Oh man, huge! I just uh, read a reread a great book. It's older. I read it probably 15 years ago, the first time, maybe The Barbarian Way by Erwin McManus, pastor down in Southern California. There's page 53, (laughs) basically says to that exact thing, like if you're not gonna he talks about being uh, innovators, you know, and he uses the story of it, you know, the first one to eat the mushroom, like there's got to be people who are willing to die to learn something new and, mm-hmm. and to stand up and be courageous. And basically said the fact, like if, if, if nobody, if you're not going to stand in the gap and nobody will, nothing's going to change. Like if we just continue to like, with a lot of this nonsense going on, like if, if, if people aren't going to stand up and defy you know, stand up for what's right and what's wrong or against what's wrong and and for what you believe in, like who's gonna, you know, so we gotta, you know, now more, now more than ever, especially this last, how many of year and how many of our months, like we need more people to really start being bold and courageous and and communicating um, and and finding different ways now because they're, they're blocking a lot of what we're saying. Yeah. And, and striving for success as well. Like, you know, Yeah. yeah. That book, I, I look forward to reading it, Barbarian Way. And there's, there's another one that comes to mind. Have you ever read The Millionaire in the Pew? Amen. That, yeah, so I, like, I almost brought that up, but, you know, pre-discussion when I was telling you <laughs> that I had somebody that, that was getting after me for not, you know, uh, you know, communicating my badassnessness. And I'm like, dude, have you read The Millionaire in the Pew? <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, all right, then. <laughs> like, just pipe down a little bit, youngster. <laughs> so. It's true, though, isn't it? Like, we, we you know, sometimes we we follow something and believe we should just be a follower and again apathetic but actually if you read into it it's saying no passion you know, follow the purpose um i love it um so i suppose you know with all this you're, you're aiming to to get great potential with people get them to realize their purpose you know preserve the history of chiropractic so the future is fi- you know fantastic what is the potential with all of that like if everybody did Mm, man. follow their true gift um you know realized how to get through the blocks to do that like what is the, what is the potential like oh, where man, could that take us almost limitless you know um which is another great book to read limitless by Jim <laughs> Quick. um you know uh uh man yeah i, I mean think it think of the like think the leaders, like if every human being was, was truly expressing their full God given potential. And none of us, like even me, like I, I, I say that, but I'm still, it's still a constant work in progress, right? We're all, we're all constantly improving ourselves each and every day. And, and if you're not, you know, either I like to teach people, you're either getting better, or you're getting worse, you're never staying the same. Um, but if we all were, striving each day to be a, even a half a percent or a percent better like just everything's just going to manifest itself at, at such a higher level than than what we're doing right now because a lot of people are again just treading water um really not um not working on themselves like that should really be our top priority is is to work on ourselves each and every day i think that's our our moral obligation to the gifts we've been given is, is, is to each day do the best that we can. And are we perfect? No, we all, we all screw up, but like reflecting and realizing that and then moving forward, you know, the other self-awareness, the other thing that I, I really see lacking on people is, is there's, they, they really don't have a good, um, and again, always trying to, you know, be better, but like really trying to fly at 30,000 feet above yourself and, and be self-aware of, you know, why did I say that? How did, why did I react that way? Why did, why did I get frustrated? Why did I get upset? Why, you know, what made me think that, what made me say that? And then, and then learning and taking those lessons, you know, self-reflecting lessons and, and, you know, changing it the next time you get into that same environment or a similar environment. So. I love it. And I just, I suppose I just want to dig on that a little bit before yeah. we wrap up is, there's a lot of people who agree with you and there's a lot of people who know they've got a burning potential burning desire and they're probably listening to this and they'll go i'll start next week i'll start tomorrow Mm. what would you say to them 
no time like the present. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, really, it's it's and it's easy to like, and that you know that's coming from fear is really where that's coming from because again, like we we open with like you know it'll create more responsibility. Oh, I'm going to have to be more disciplined in this area of my life because I know I need to get there. So it's going to, it's going to require me to read more. It's going to require me to eat better. It's going to require me to get better rat, whatever it might be there. They know that there's going to be some responsibility and they're not ready yet for that responsibility. But when they're, when their reasons are greater than their rations, they're going to do it anyway. Right. So mm -hmm. when they're, when their reasons to get up and because they're wise big enough when the reasons are great enough, they're going to, they're going to over, override the rations between their head. Cause we all have rations like, Oh man, it is my bed is comfortable right now. My, I am snuggling. Like, I don't want to get up, but my, my reason's big enough. Like, all right, she'll be there tomorrow or tonight. Like I'm going to get up and go do what I'm supposed to do. Um, and so, yeah, they just haven't, they haven't, they haven't realized that they're, you know, they have a bigger mission. So, yeah. I love that. That's going to be the title of the show. Reasons greater than your rations. I, I, I really enjoy that. <laughs> So if you could, if you could leave our audience with one, one thing, advice, yeah. you know, somewhere to go or something that you've learned that they could learn, what, what would it be? Don't give up on yourself. Um, know that, know that you were designed and created for greatness. It might not be where you want to be right now, but just don't give up on yourself. Just keep, you know, keep trying to get 1% better every day. Um, uh, and, and just keep working like it doesn't, it's, it's, it's a never ending game, right? We're, we're here to work and, and serve until we're done. And so, yeah, just don't give up on yourself. If you're aligned with your passions, just keep moving towards it and don't, and don't get frustrated with the process. Just knowing that, you know, done is better than perfect and you'll be right where you're. And, and that's the other thing is you are right where we are right where we're supposed to be. Like right mm -hmm. now I am right where I'm supposed to be because I'm learning things today from you, from the environment I just had of pasture coffee, they're going to help move me forward. So don't, don't like, just know that you are right where you're supposed to be because you're going to learn something today. Um, that's going to help you be a better person tomorrow, but just be self-aware enough of those lessons that we get lessons every single day, but most of us are um, so, so bombarded with external stuff. We're not receiving those. Right. And that's why it takes us a little bit longer. So the more you can learn to like, Hey, I'm learning from Dr. Tom and Dr. Paul and, you know, Pastor Parrish this morning, like learning these things along the way. So don't, don't get frustrated, keep doing it and you'll be there. Brilliant. Dr. Paul, thank you. Where, where can people find out more uh, about your, uh, or what you're doing? Yeah. Uh, drpaulreed.com is the easiest way to read my emails on there. You can shoot me an email message, Instagram, all that stuff. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Dr. Paul, thank you ever so much for being on the show. I really you, appreciate you uh, taking the time and getting up early over there to join us. So thank you. Thank you, brother.